Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning into my brand new YouTube channel. I'm so excited to be here today. I've been really wanting to start this channel for a long time and I'm really excited. So what I want to talk today is about how I was able to become an observant Jew, um, an Orthodox Jew, a Torah Jew, how that happened for me in my life, kind of my Jewish journey. So it actually began when I was... Hmm, how old was I? It began during COVID. I was always really spiritual. I was always thinking about God, thinking about spirituality, thinking about religion, and thinking about like what what impact does my action have in the physical world, in the spiritual world. Like I always was very well aware that there was like more than what meets the eye and like more than our five senses can perceive. And so I was always reading about that, always interested in like law of attraction. I worked at a crystal shop for like a few months, like always reading about the universe and like law of attraction. When I was much younger, actually, my family belonged to, my mom brought us to this church called the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship, which is like a religion that kind of validates all religions and, and says like every book has truth to it, every holiday has truth to it. So they'll celebrate like, Kwanzaa and then they'll celebrate like Hanukkah um, and Christmas but that for me was very confusing because I was very much a truth seeker I really wanted to get to the bottom of like what is the truth like one truth truth inherently means that it must that there can only be one right if everything is true nothing is true it's mutually exclusive so I was very much a truth seeker and exposed to all different types of religions from a very young age. I had friends who were part of the Seventh-day Adventist church and they would take me to that church very often. Um, and I was always just well aware that there was a higher power because I could emotionally feel that. Like I could inherently intuit that there was something greater than myself and I would always pray. And when prayers would come true in my life, I thought it was magical. I thought that there's magic prayers come true. What, what is this? You can ask for what you want. You can get it. The universe responds to us. Um, there must be a God. So that was never a problem for me to believe that there was a God. My mom always taught me also like God is real pray and God will answer you. But she said like, you can pick your own religion type of thing. So I was, um, at this point in my life, like very young, not practicing Judaism, my family was not religious. Um, and then as I got older, I, around age 12, started being invited to my classmates' bat mitzvahs and bar mitzvahs. And I realized, like, wait, there, not only was the party so much fun, but the service before the party was very meaningful for me. I really enjoyed, like, the services before the party. And I thought, wait, this is my own religion. Why don't I look into this more? This is, we, I knew we were Jewish. So I thought, why don't I explore this more? So I ended up going to um, asking my mom, begging her to put me in Hebrew school. And I went to a reform after school Hebrew school. And reform is like um, a certain section, a certain sect of Judaism or like flavor of Judaism. And um, so I, and they believe, they pretty much believe that the, the Torah, which is the book, for those of you who don't know, which is the guiding book of Judaism, the Torah is has like very valuable ideas, but is not to be taken literally to apply uh, in a literal sense, to apply in a literal sense to our lives today. So it's sort of like a movement of Judaism. And basically, I didn't know any of that. I didn't know that there was multiple shades and colors of Judaism and like ways to practice Judaism. I thought that there was going to Hebrew school. Great. You're doing it. So I went to Hebrew school and I was studying to have my bat mitzvah. And my mom thought like, she just wants a party. All her classmates are having a party. And I did, but I also felt a certain connection to it. And it really made me happy on a very deep level. It made me really fulfilled to go to Hebrew school and to learn about God, about Judaism. And so I had a bat mitzvah and I continued with after after school Jewish day school education after public school I didn't go to a Jewish school I went to public school I went to um, a high
high school after school thing for Jewish for Jewish education. It was just so fun, so fulfilling for me, really enlivened my life. After that, I went on Birthright when I went to college and Birthright was an incredibly moving experience. For me, Birthright was a hallmark because when you go to the land of Israel, there's something so holy about it that you can really connect to, even if you're, no matter who you are, no matter where you come from, your background, you, just connecting and being in the land, there's such an inherent sense of spirituality that lingers like perfume long after you've left Israel. So I went on birthright. I had an incredible moving experience. I came back, went to college, and I was not religious at this point, not observant. I would sometimes like pop in for a Friday night Shabbat dinner. Shabbat, for those who don't know, is the day of rest in Judaism from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. And so I would pop in there occasionally to just like for socially, just to feel connected um, to the Jewish, to my Judaism, or just to say hi to some friends who I knew who were religious, but it wasn't something where I kept any of the laws of Shabbat or anything like that. Um, so I, and I was really, really like just partying, bartender, sororities, like just really not. Judaism was the last thing on my mind in college, really. I was studying, I was getting good grades, but I was also just partying and working as a bartender and trying to just have fun and leaving, leading a really hedonistic lifestyle. And um, yeah, it wasn't fulfilling, obviously. It, it left me feeling empty. Um, but really, it's exciting, it's fun when you're in it and you think, oh, everyone's doing it, right? It's college, so everyone around you is doing it and it just feels right and it feels exciting and spontaneous and fun. And, um, but I knew it wasn't sustainable. I knew like this type of lifestyle is not sustainable after college or at least long into your like late 20s and early 30s. So I graduated college, I went to, um, I moved to New York, no, I went to teach English abroad in Austria for a year and I was obviously not connected with my Judaism at this point either. I um, was enjoying living abroad and teaching in Austria but I and it was fun and, that, and that's it. I wasn't really thinking about Judaism at this point. I had then came to went to um, it was COVID so I moved back to America and I started living in Manhattan and I wanted and I wanted to like obviously meet people and be connected to people who were living in Manhattan where I was living because it's COVID. I'm like 22 or something at this point. There's no social scene happening obviously during COVID. Everything is closed. How am I going to make friends? How am I going to meet people? So my uncle is Israeli and throughout my life my uncle had always had Shabbat dinners. He was not religious but he was so spiritual, such a generous, kind, person and his like devotion to always having Shabbat dinners every single week never missing a Friday night dinner was really like left an imprint on me um, so I like always remember that and he he told me like you should check out Shabbat dinners because there's nothing else going on right now in the city if you want to meet people why don't you check out this one table Shabbat dinner one table is a really cool organization for people who don't have or who want to go to a new Shabbat dinner experience and they're maybe not religious. You can sign up on onetable.com to be to attend a meal for free at someone else's house. So I did that and there was someone who was in the Upper West Side who has like huge meals free for like hundreds of people every week in the Upper West Side. Really an incredible person who put, puts on these meals. And I don't know how he does it. And I went to that. I ended up meeting a lot of people in the Upper West Side. And I just started attending more and more Jewish activities and socializing more in the Upper West Side. I was so curious about Judaism. I would love, I loved attending classes. I remember I walked into a place called, um, to a Kiruv place, to a Kiruv synagogue. Kiruv means outreach. <coughs> so I walked into um, a synagogue that was on... A Jewish holiday where you stay up all night studying Torah and I walked in, walked in I had dinner and they invited me to have dinner for free I didn't pay they invited me to stay and I saw that they were studying Torah all night through the night they were like drinking coffee at like 
10 o'clock being like, yeah, we're studying Torah all night. And I thought, that's so cool. That's so interesting. And I wanted to stay. That's like really, that was really exciting for me. So I didn't know that, right? I thought Judaism, I'm staying up all night studying Torah. Like, wait, what? I thought, what, what, what's going on? I didn't know there was that much to being a Jew. Um, so I stayed for that. And I remember it changed my life. There was classes, all night Torah classes. There was books that we were reading about self-improvement, self-development, how to live a more meaningful and fulfilling life. And the Jewish, the Jewish thought and that, that I was absorbing from those classes, from being at this really special organization, just absolutely changed my life. And I think a lot of people have that experiences because there's such amazing Jewish outreach organizations, especially where I live in Manhattan. It can really change your entire life to lead to help you lead a more fulfilling life. And so I started attending classes at that organization more regularly. I signed up for their program to every week, three hours a day, three hours once a week um, to study. And then it culminated in a trip to Israel, this program. So I actually went before. So I was really interested, obviously. I was going, studying there every week three hours, meeting new people, trying to keep Shabbat more and more, growing a lot, learning so much. And I remember someone told me I should go study in Israel. And I was like, meh, I'm not going to take off from work to drop everything, to go uproot my life and go study in Israel. But yeah, I was like, no. So then I eventually went on another retreat to another retreat. It's called Sinai Retreats. And it took like a lot of convincing for me to go to these things. Like I was not like, let's go. I was like, "Eh, I don't know. But people saw how interested and passionate I was about Judaism. And they knew that I could only grow in certain, I could grow best in certain environments. And thank God for those people pushing me to grow. Because I promise I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for them. And at first you can feel so reluctant to these things. Like I was not trying to uproot my life and go even on this weekend retreat. I remember... I had, I went upstate for this retreat in Lake George and it was to learn more about Judaism and be with like-minded people who also wanted to learn and grow in their Judaism. I remember my mom had to pick me up early because I was working as a real estate agent and I had to unlock an apartment that I had rented out to someone to a rent to a, to someone. And I had like the key with me on the retreat upstate. So she had to drive like five hours. Thank God. She's like the best, um, to bring me back early from the retreat that I could unlock the door and this person could move into their apartment. So yeah, anyway, sidetracked. So I started going to just more of these things. My rabbis, my mentors and teachers were saying, oh, you should learn and grow in Israel. They kept saying that. I also kept meeting girls who had gone to Israel to study Torah and see and saw the impact that it had on them. And they told me, just raved about it to me. So it gets in your head and eventually, okay. I also was dating somebody at the time who was more religious than me, who was an observant Jew and I was not yet an observant Jew. And they really left a huge impact on me as well. They really got me thinking about like how to live life in a more like detail oriented and meaningful way. And I was so inspired by their self-discipline and by their commitment to Torah um, and to God, it's, it was such an attractive quality, quality to me to see a man not live for his own instincts, his own desires, but for something higher. And I thought, wow, like that's the type of person I would want to marry one day. And so I um, was just very inspired by that, and that kept fueling my growth. Eventually, I end up in the summer, that same summer, going to Israel and studying at an amazing school and um this school is like nine to five classes about torah about judaism from incredible teachers like brilliant minds renowned in their fields world-renowned speakers lecturers rabbis um, female teachers everything and they were so relatable this school is like they're bringing you relatable teachers who inspire you so much they it lit, it lit my soul on fire it really did like hearing just all the, this truth. I was overcome with the feeling that like, wow, Torah is true. Judaism is true. And I know it sounds like that's brainwashing, but in reality, we're all being brainwashed all the time by 
everyone around us by so many different things all at once. So I feel like it's intentional brainwashing. It's choosing what to be brainwashed by. And that's Torah. Like, so I learned so many things about self. I already, I always love self-development. I always love self-improvement and like being, and having a guidebook that, that like the Torah where teachers were able to explain like ancient wisdom on this stuff, because it's like, we're not the first people here, you know, we're, we're, we're not, the world has been going on for a very long time and I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel here. I'm trying to learn from people smarter than me, people who have ancient timeless wisdom. So I felt that the school did an amazing job at that. It's really like incredible, incredible place. And it's the most beautiful place. It looks literally like Gan Eden, the garden of Eden. Um, and there's like r roses everywhere and like sunset, like flowers on a mountain in Jerusalem in Israel. Really incredible place. So after that, I got a job at a Jewish company and I, it was amazing for my growth also because I was constantly around people who were, um, who were practicing observant Judaism and who were helping other people be inspired by Judaism. And this was the perfect company for me. I was so grateful to God for placing me at that company because, you know, that, that didn't have to happen. That was really spontaneous how it happened. Um, it's called Hashkacha practice in Judaism where in Hebrew, where it's like God intervenes in your life and places you exactly where you need to be totally spontaneously without you, without you even doing anything. And that other people attribute that to a coincidence. But to me, it was so clearly the hand of God, so to speak. So that was an amazing experience for me. I've been working there for about a year now. And um, then this past summer, I most recently went to another school in Israel. Not the same school I went to the first time, but um, a different school. And they taught me more of like the intricate, detailed laws of how to actually keep Torah and mitzvot. And that was really powerful and empowering for me because for a long time I was so fueled by inspiration and fueled by um, what I had learned at the first school, which was a lot about self-development and connection to God and spirituality. And that's what I love. That's what I thrive on. But I was missing a component of structure, law, halakha, which means Jewish, which is Jewish law, um, structure and just the details of everyday living as an observant Jew, what has to happen in your day. There's something so beautiful about, and I know a lot of people think it's overwhelming and weird, I definitely did it first, about um, the little intricacies that Judaism makes us think about. It's almost like, wait, why does God care how I put my shoes on in the morning? Or why does God care if I wash my hands when I wake up and say a blessing? Like, doesn't God have more bigger important things to worry about? But at the end of the day, I think it's beautiful that Judaism believes God does care about those little things. God's involved even in our lives, even to the most minute detail of our existence. That's a really beautiful, powerful, empowering thought to have, right? As opposed to, eh, he, he has more things to worry about than little old me. So, um, yeah, I went back, I went to that school this past summer, and now I'm starting this YouTube channel. I'm so excited. Um, to see where this takes me and I hope that this channel can be a place that just gets us all thinking and keeps us inspired and fueled to question things to just ask the right questions and get answers um, this is not to say that anybody should like change their beliefs at all but I know that there's a lot of curio curiosity around this type of this stuff I get asked these questions in real life all the time and I thought it would be really um, meaningful to make a channel about it. So thank you so much for watching. I know this has been a long first video. I appreciate all of you so much. And for more of this content, please subscribe and like this video. That way I can know that you enjoyed it and make similar content. Have a great day and talk to you soon.